To be honest, you're just like me. You've been through all these different Pokemon regions. Now, if you haven't, that means that you probably weren't born around the 1990s, and if that's the case, then you're a Zoomer. And if you're one of those Zoomies, then good luck, you're on your own. But if the clock is ticking for you as well, I wanna ask you something. How good is Kanto? Now, before we go any further, let me say this is opinion-based. Your opinion can be different than mine. I'm just gonna say how I see it. However, if you think differently, please put in the comments below, what do you see that's different than what I see? Now, if you're curious about what I'm basing this off of, I'm basing this off of Kanto games. Red, blue, yellow, fire red, leaf green, etc. If it's not on that list, I don't care. The anime, ask Ketchum what he did, I do not care. That being said, I will not talk about the movies. I may mention the movies just to complain about the movies, but it will not hurt the overall score of each region regardless. I'm here to talk about the Pokemon games. I'm here to talk about the Pokemon within those games, to talk about gym leaders, everything else within them, nothing else. Finally, if you wanna see this series continue, please consider like, commenting, subscribing to see more. I see a lot of y'all don't subscribe and that's, just, that's cruel. So <laughs> if you wanna see more of this, Consider doing that, let's get started. Pokemon Red and Blue came out in 1996, and this was crazy. This is evolutional, because the only thing that was an RPG doing the same thing as Pokemon was Dragon Quest. But you weren't catching Pokemon at the time. That was not a thing. It was, hey, you could do an RPG and grind up, level up, stuff like that to beat big bad bosses. It was crazy at the time, because this was really the first game that you went and you caught 150 some Pokemon and you could train them up. You could do whatever you wanted with them, right? And you're running around beating big bad bosses with them. It was amazing. But even better than that, you got to choose who was your starter. When the games came out between the picks of Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle, it seemed even at first. However, as of recent polls, Charmander has taken over everything mainly because, I mean, his final form looks like a dragon, right? But for all the Squirtle Turtles and Bobby Bulbs out there, I'm one of you guys too. That was my first starter, Bulbasaur. And even though, technically speaking, by type-wise, etc., he wasn't that great, it really doesn't matter because you pick what you liked, right? And that's what made you your type of trainer. And even though in the near future, they started to give one of these three starters a lot more love with giving them more mega evolutions than the other, and they started just giving out one of them for free in another generation, which was very crazy. It really doesn't matter. If you are a fan of, you know, the plant gang or you're a fan of, you know, Turtle Squad, that's perfectly fine, right? And that's what a lot of people in those 1990s were doing. What side are you on? However, let's say you didn't want Bulbasaur, Charmander, and or Squirtle. For the first time ever, two years later, if you got Pokemon Yellow, you got to pick a starter that wasn't actually a starter. And not only that, you could get all three of the previous starters in the same game. A lot of people seem to forget, you didn't have to actually pick one of the original three. Instead, your starter was Pikachu. And this is the mascot of Pokemon. I mean, he's inside Macy's. So not only you got to pick the most popular Pokemon out there, you also got a chance to go get the other three starters and use them all within the same game. So you're telling me I can have Pikachu, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle all in the same game, at which no other Pokemon main game has done since. I'm not counting Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, not Let's Go Pikachu, nothing like that. Only a main series game. Besides the Pokemon, I want to talk about the gym leaders as well. The gym leaders that they put in this game were crispy. The first gym leader you see is Brock, and as the name suggests, he has rock types. Now, you won't have any rock types on your team at this point, and nor can you actually go get one unless you're actually trading with friends. So the best way to beat him is to have a grass type or a water type. However, for the Charmander fans out there, you know fire can't really do anything against rock. So what did Pokemon do to try to help you guys out? Game Freak puts you right in front of Viridian Forest. There's nothing but bug types. You could level up Charmander, get Metal Claw, and run through that. But let's say you couldn't do that regardless, right? It was a little bit too hard for you at that time. For literally no geographical reason at all, Game Freak decided to put a fighting type right next to the first city, 
past Pallet Town. There was no reason for a man to be so close to Viridian City. It was literally right next door. So why would they put that there except that they were actually helping the player who would have picked Charmander, or even the ones that are struggling with Squirtle and Bulbasaur anyways? If that's not enough proof for you, outside of Cerulean City, where you would fight Erica, the grass type gym leader, you can find two different fire types right outside the grass. Why would they be there if anywhere on this map? Now listen, I'm not saying these gym leaders are slouches. You got to fight Giovanni and also Blue, or Gary, depending on what you want to call him. Some people call him Now Giovanni was actually a very good evil villain. The thing is, he wasn't here for just glorifying Pokemon and making sure they're free. He was there for control and money. That's what Team Rocket really stood for and nothing else. But then you had your rival, partner, whatever you guys want to call him. And Blue slash Gary slash is actually somebody that you hated. You noticed that he had all different types of Pokemon. He was a better trainer. He even became the final league boss at the end. So I'm not saying none of these gym leaders or any of these big bad bosses were actually a slouch. They were all very formidable. Besides that, the Elite Four was actually phenomenal. You have Ice type, Fighting, Ghost, Dragon, and if you can beat all four of those with no healing whatsoever, then you have to go fight your rival. And the worst part about fighting him is each one of his Pokemon has its own unique typing. It's, it's ridiculous. However, note this, everything I've said before this moment right here is positive. It's good, it helped the game. However, I did my research, I got busy, and I found plenty of things that people disliked so much about this game that I'm just gonna lay it out here. Number uno, psychics were way too good. If you remember Sabrina, she had an Alakazam. Alakazam was ridiculous. Even if you had a Pokemon that could probably beat it, it probably didn't outspeed her. At the point where she's probably the fifth or sixth gym leader you could reach, it was way too strong. There's no way you're gonna be able to beat it at all. The worst part about it is you can't get yourself your own Alakazam. If you wanted to go find a friend, you could try it, but you better hope they give you back your Kadabra. Otherwise, they're set there to take it, they have an Alakazam, and you have something like, oh, I don't know, a Pidgey. Numero dos. I decided to put this up here, and this graphic is a good example. If you want to pause the video and read this, th this is for use, you know, competitive players. A lot of this stuff on here is a very big concern, but I want to point out some of the ones that are even worse. First off, the critical everything was terrible. Critical hits were based off of speed. If you're running around here with the Alakazam, you know, the one I said before that has Hyper Beam, your speed is already crazy. So you're more likely to hit a critical hit with that Hyper Beam. But what's even worse is the second part towards the middle. If you look next to this Grimer icon, it says, if you were to KO somebody with a rechargeable move, if that Pokemon is KO'd, you don't have to recharge anymore. So to put this nicely, if you didn't understand, um, you should be running Hyper Beam. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you miss or not, okay? You're more likely to get a crit. It's too powerful. If you kill, you can do it again. It is unfair. Numero three, the last thing I had to say is these Pokemon, some of them are very unattractive. And this is not just a thing with Kanto. There's plenty more elsewhere in other regions that are even worse. But let's just look at some of these and just talk about how bad it is. First off, Poliwag. Poliwag is swag, man. He's a little tadpole. He does what he wants to do. I mean, he doesn't bother nobody. He's cool. Poliwag was even swaggier when he grew some limbs. He would even put on a king's rock and just swag it out. It, it was it was fire. But then he evolved with the water stone and it, it got worse. Poliwag literally became just an angry Poliwag. And they changed the name to Poliwrath because he was angry. What? Here's another good one. Look at Grimer and Muck. You ever know that they're just sludge? Like they're literally just, just slime. <laughs> Slap. Now for the sake of time, I can't go over every single abomination there is. However, if you wanna go see, go look at what people talk about these different 151 Pokemon. Some of them just look awful, I'm sorry. Regardless, Kanto has some small issues, but for the time it came out, it did very, very well. 
I'm not judging it as of 2022 when this video is being recorded and pushed out. I'm recording it for when it came out in 1996 through 8. So in my personal opinion, it's a 9 out of 10. Now just to be clear, Fire Red Leaf Green fixed a lot of the issues they had before. So I want to say overall, Gen 1 Kanto is that 9 out of 10. And let me know what you think. Is it 9 out of 10? Is it not? Tell me what you believe in, right? And again, this is just an open conversation about it. So if you want to see more about this, show some love to this channel, these videos, and maybe I'll put out part two for Johto. Talk about it later. So yeah, have a good one. Peace.